Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve jump game two. So you might remember recently we solved the first jump game problem and I would recommend watching that video or solving that problem yourself before looking at this one because this one is actually very similar. The main difference is we are, the premise of the problem is the exact same. We're given an integer array of non-negative integers. They're always non-negative and we are placed at the first index of this array. So let's say this is our input array. We're going to be placed at the first index over here. And our goal is going to be over here, the last value in the index. That's the goal. And our goal is to jump to the last position from the first position in our integer array. In this problem, though, the question we're trying to answer is, what is the minimum number of jumps that it takes for us to reach the last index? And luckily for us, we can always assume that we're always going to be able to reach that last index. So in this first problem, we know that we're starting here, right, in this two position. If we take, so since we're at the position two, we have two choices, right? We can either take a jump of length one or we can take a jump of length two. Our choices are these two values, the three and the one. If we take, if we reach the one, then we take one more jump, get to the second one, and then we take a third jump to get to the four, which is the goal, right? The goal is the four, the last position of the array. Or if we, if we go to the three instead, then we can actually just take a jump of length three to get to the four, which means that in this case, it'll take us exactly two jumps, right? We go from two to three, and then we get to the goal. So that took two steps, two jumps, and our output can be two because we're looking for that minimum number of steps. So you might know that this is a problem that can be solved with dynamic programming, just like the first jump game solution. But I'm not really going to go over the dynamic programming solution because actually just like jump game one, this problem also has a greedy solution. And it turns out that the greedy solution is a linear time solution. So O big O of N, whereas the dynamic programming solution is actually big O of N squared. So we know that with this problem we can make a some kind of decision tree right we know that this first position right two it has two choices right if we're jumping from this position right we can jump to the three or we can jump to the one right so those are our decisions right so really from two we can get to these next two values the greedy solution is going to be something similar to a breadth first search type solution right so next so we looked at this value right this two that was the starting position and we saw that these are the next values that we can go to from there right we're going to continue this process that's why it's kind of like a breadth first search because we're going to be continuing this exact algorithm what we're going to be doing though now is we saw that from here, we could get to these next two values. Now the next question becomes, from this entire portion of the array, what are all the other values outside of this portion that we can also reach? Let's take a look at that. From this three, we know we can reach this next one, right? But that doesn't count because it's already a part of our green area, right? We can reach that one, but it's redundant because we can already uh, get to this part. We can also get to this next one, right? So that's going to be at the next level or the next part of our breadth first search. We can also reach the destination, which is four, right? At this point, we would, we would normally be done with our algorithm because we know that we can reach this four and we've basically found the minimum number of steps that allow us to do that. But we're gonna continue with this just to understand the algorithm. So we know that from this three, we are able to reach these two values. Let's just continue it just to see, okay, this one, we also need to check what are all the positions it can reach. Well, in this case, it can only reach this one and that's already included in our purple area. Okay, so now we see that, th that this purple level is what we can reach from the green level. These 
proportions. And the whole reason I'm color coding this is because the levels tell us how many steps it takes to reach these cells, the minimum number of steps, right? We know that we start at this position, right? Therefore, the number of steps it takes to reach this position is zero, right? It, it takes zero jumps for us to reach this position. How now my question to you is how many steps does how many jumps does it take to reach the green uh values it takes exactly one jump right that's the whole point of color coding it because we know from two we can jump here or we can jump here it takes one jump for us to reach any of these values if we're taking the minimum route right we're taking the minimum number of jumps now uh, next what about the purple values? How many jumps, what's the minimum number of jumps that it takes for us to reach these? Well, obviously it's two because if it takes us one jump to reach these green values and we can take one jump from the green to get to the purple, it's gonna take one extra jump to get here. So it's obviously gonna be two jumps right? This is pretty simple. This is a pretty straightforward algorithm. We would continue it uh, if we had more values in our array. But as you can see, what we're doing here is basically through a simple or a one-dimensional array, breadth first search, we are finding the minimum path or the minimum number of jumps to reach the destination, right? Remember, we only care about the destination. Once we reach the destination, we are done. So in this case, we can see it takes exactly two jumps for us to reach the destination. So this is the visual explanation, but now hopefully you get the idea of what we're doing. The colors hopefully can illustrate that. And we're going to translate this into the code. It's very little code. The code is actually pretty straightforward. Let me show you how to do that part now that we know the breadth first search algorithm. So remember, we are counting the number of jumps it takes to reach the destination. We'll call that result. We'll initially set that to zero. I'm also going to have two pointers, left and right. And they're both initially going to be set to zero because these left and right pointers are going to tell us our window. We saw that initially the window starts at just zero, zero, right? The first initial value. So that's what it's going to be. We know that I think the second level was where left equals one, right equals two, right? So this would represent a window from index one all the way to index two. And that's basically, this is basically going to determine what level of or what portion of the array is going to be used for breadth first search currently. And we know we are going to continue this algorithm until right, which is the rightmost value of our current portion, until it reaches the last value of the input array. So while our right pointer is less than the last index, we're going to be continuing our algorithm and keep incrementing that result. So just for visual purposes, uh, what I mean by the left pointer is that let's say we're currently going through the green. Our left pointer would be here because it's the left most value of the portion we're going through. Our right pointer would be at the rightmost portion. So that's great. Last thing is how are we going to determine the boundaries for the next portion? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to look at who can jump the farthest. The three, the farthest jump it can make is one, two, three, right? The farthest jump it can make is to this value. The one, the farthest jump it can do is just a one so it can get here, right? So what we're going to do now to update our pointers is we're going to take our left pointer and set it to right plus one, right? It's going to be adjacent to the right pointer. So this is where our left pointer would go. Where's our right pointer going to go? It's going to go to the place that we can jump the farthest, right? It's going to go to the right boundary of our purple area. So we're going to cross this out and put right over here. The reason we're putting it over here is that's the farthest position that we can jump to from the previous section the green section. So now let's get back into the code. So we are going to have a, ver a variable farthest, which is going to tell us who can jump the farthest and what's the index of that jump. So right now we're going to go through our portion. You could say we're going through our green portion. So for I in range uh, from left to right, 
plus one because we have to make the right value inclusive. So going through this loop, all we're trying to determine is who can jump the farthest because that's gonna determine how we can update our left and right pointers. So what we're gonna do is just set farthest equal to the max of itself and the max of the jump that we're currently performing. So I is the index that tells us the jump we're performing. So we're jumping from index I, so I plus the value at index I, which tells us how far we can actually jump. So nums of I plus I is gonna tell us what's the, loc what's the farthest location that this could jump to. And so we're gonna take the max of this and then update that farthest variable. By the end of it, we should be good. Farthest should be set to what the farthest it can go is. And then we can update our window, right? So we can say left is now gonna be equal to right plus one, just like I showed in the picture. Right is gonna be equal to farthest. And don't forget to increment the result each time because remember that's telling us how many jumps we're taking to get to that end point. So once you are done with this, that's actually the entire algorithm. After that, all you have to do is return the result. So what we're doing here is basically a, a simplified breadth first search. It's We're doing it on a one dimensional uh, array and we're using a left and right variables to keep track of what our current window is. We're also updating that window as we keep progressing. Once our window, or in other words, our right pointer reaches the last value in the input array, that's when you know that we're done counting the jumps and we can stop our, in our loop and then we can return the number of jumps that we took, the minimum number of jumps. So I hope that this was helpful. I hope you have a visual understanding of this problem as well as understanding the code. And thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if this was helpful and have a great day. I'll see you pretty soon.